Do you wave your terrible towel when Renegade plays? Reach for a tasty cake when JJ shouts, He scores! Does the sound of an F1 engine make your heart race? Doing push-ups with the Nittany Lion after a TD? Then lend us an ear, and we will share the exhilaration of Steelers football, the excitement of Flyers hockey, the nail-biting finishes of F1, and the pride when we yell, We are Penn State! Welcome to the Steel Flyers Show, the strangest combination of sports fandom since pineapple was put on pizza. And now, your host, Steel Flyers. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for joining us. I'm your host, Steel Flyers, and that is our delightful and lovely co-host, Ronis. Thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. And also, boy, have we got a show lined up for you guys today. We got the great Perlo Wisdom. How you doing, Perlo? I'm doing fantastic, my friend. It's beautiful here in Alberta. I can't believe how warm it is and lots of sports going on. It's good times. You got it, man, for sure. Thank you for uh, sitting in here with us for sure. And another great, awesome guest, the Professor Joe Boric. How you doing, Joe? Doing well, guys. Doing well. Uh, I hope everyone else is doing well. I'm just excited to talk some sports like always on our weekly show here. Yeah, exactly. Sure, for sure. And we're going to get into some great things. And one of the first things that we're going to get into uh, is a little bit of hockey news. Uh, we had some some near and dear to your heart up there in uh, Edmonton, Mr. Perlow. And uh, we had a little bit of a signing going on there. So why don't you fill us in? Yeah, uh, everybody knows I love Philly, but I'm also an Oilers fan since I'm from here. Uh, and uh, Mr. Holland, they brought in Kenny Holland from Detroit uh, when Stevie Eiserman, after St- Stevie Eiserman stepped in. Um, and I was very happy about that move, and it's just getting happier and happier because that Cahoon signing for a million, um, just under a million dollars for a guy who's five on five numbers have been at a very high level for a while. I don't know why he keeps on moving from team to team. I don't know what this kid has to do to prove himself but uh dry sidle everybody knows dry sidle one of the best centers in the league uh which we have two of here in edmonton uh he and uh cahoon were friends for quite some time so that was apparently he was actually kind of hoping that edmonton would pick up cahoon before chicago did when he came over from germany and uh, didn't work <laughs> out but now they found a way to bring him over and it really solidifies, hopefully, our top six. I have a feeling they're going to try to top them, play them up there in the top six, and gives Oiler it gives the Oilers something that uh, we don't hear too often of in these these parts. It's called depth, forward depth. <laughs> and, and, and being a Philadelphia fan, I've had to watch two of my favorite teams come to having depth over the years, and we can now say both can ha- have depth, which is absolutely fantastic. So I'm very happy about that signing. Fantastic For signing. sure. And Holland's been doing a fantastic job. Exactly. Joe, what do you think about uh, them adding that player up there in Edmonton, man? I think that's a I, – I mean, we – we all agree that that's going to be a good move, and, and you can't go wrong with adding depth because, obviously, we've heard a lot about that here in Philadelphia. Uh, but what do you think about that, Joe? Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with adding depth, especially with a player in their mid-20s who – I think the only reason he tends to move from team to team is – well, this year is literally the market. Uh, but in past years, it's just been – Again, uh, he's one of those players, like I mentioned in past podcasts, when we brought up like the Fogels and other guys of the world, the Nick Cousins of the world. They tend to just go to teams that don't want to spend on their extra people because they already have those extra depth people. So then it's, or they're trying to do something else with the organization, like retool or whatever have you. So then they don't spend on them, where going to Edmonton, like, uh, Pirlo hit hit it. It's probably the best case scenario for him because I I don't know if we read the same article, but he probably just knew this being a fan anyway. But I read an article that talked about how he was good friends with Dry Sidle. So just being in a comfortability aspect from the jump usually can help you in tenfold as a player, I would think, because you already know somebody, you're already good friends with somebody who, by the way, is the second biggest leader on the team. Yeah. Excuse me. So, I mean, that goes a long way. And you're probably going to be on his line. 
because if Dominic Kahn's in the top six, he's not going to be on the first line. Yeah. He's going to be on the second line, so he's going to be with Dre. That's probably why he won. He probably wanted a guy he knew he could play well with too. So yeah. it's likely going to work well because they already know each other. And I th- think they played together, right? Yeah, they played together yeah. in uh, in Germany. Yeah, okay, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. So okay. they already sure have lots. some chemistry together. Lots, so. Yeah. Wow. See, there you go. Yeah. They already have some chemistry and. Yeah. You know, Ken- that's, Kenny that's Holland, good. This is the kind of moves that Kenny Holland does. He likes to find players that people on the team already know or he knows and the coach knows. And that, like, for instance, we talked about Turris and how Turris worked with uh, Tippett early for a while, for a little while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's great, man. I mean, you know, and that's one of those things that, you know, might help push Edmonton a little closer and get them a little bit more you know, to where they need to be and, and get going to where they need to get going too. you know what I mean? So uh, I believe we also had mentioned uh, previously that the, the OHL did come out and mention that there was going to be no checking, no body checking uh, this year in the OHL. And I don't know about you guys, but that to me just is a real head scratcher, if you ask me. Well, I mean, I mean you know why they did it, but... I mean, with COVID and, and all the other issues going on. Okay, I, I understand that, but... Uh, I don't uh, get it at all. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand what they're trying to do, but but I think they're going about it the wrong way. I, mean, I don't even understand what they're trying to do. I mean, if you, you're still going to be contact. You're still going to be close to each other. There's still going to be that. I think the idea is that when you hit, cause quite often straight mucus comes out, right? Like I've had it happen, especially if I'm not if I'm sick or whatever. But you won't be sick playing hockey, for sure. Like if you even got a like a sign of sniffles at all, there's no right. way you're going to be guy. And it, and even if if you are, I don't think taking body checking out is going to really help at all. Like to me, it's I think there's ulterior motives behind this. See, I wasn't sure if it was more um, trying to prevent injuries more as well as COVID. Like, are they trying to, like, the NFL prevent concussions and, you know, other Not things? in this, I don't think in this league, but, I mean, I think it's more of, you know, I, it's hard to, to nail down why they're trying to do this because, you know, it doesn't matter you're, you're, if you're playing next to somebody and, and you're playing the puck, that means you still have to be relatively much closer than six feet. There's no social distancing out there on the ice, and you're not going to be wearing a freaking mask. And the other point that you made, too, is you shouldn't even be playing if you're testing positive or sick. Well, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, what do you the, think, Joe? Did you, I, I, was, I wanted to get your input on that, Joe. Um, the other um, thing with the OHL is I think part of it, uh, Ronice might have hit it, could be safety, and part of it might be let's just experiment because we can – say it's for safety <laughs> with what's going on and we want more offense every hockey league is not trying to create more defense there, no, nobody wants to see more defense in terms of the well, league and most fans so a lot of now some fans like me I don't mind watching if there's a really good defensive game but most people don't so like they want to create more offense obviously having less checking and then it's definitely no checking is going to create leaps and bounds. Like, Zade Wisdom, like Jamie said, and Tyson Forster are probably going to go off in the OHL because they're not going to get hit, and both of them are huge and can score. Um, So, like, they're probably going to just park themselves in front of the net and not be able to get hit out of the front of the net. So, but, so you got to weigh these numbers in retrospect by the end of the season from the OHL because you're going to have people that go leap and bounds that are not going to be first liners in the NHL that look like they might project as first liners by their numbers because there was no checking. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously that. So that you got it, but I think it's just going to be a one year thing. I do think they might, the OHL compared to the NHL and other leagues has been a bit behind in updating their hitting rules to make it more in our century. So maybe it is to a experiment a little that's why i wanted to ask him because i wanted to see if he was going to say the same thing as i was going to say and that's exactly usually joe and i pretty much line up exactly the same and i agree i think this is an experiment 
I think this is uh, it's also a way to possibly protect their players in a condensed season from getting a lot of injuries. It might even be coming from even higher where, hey, you know what? It's a condensed season. These guys aren't going to be. Look what's happening in the NFL, right, with all the injuries that are happening because of uh, lack of training camp and all that kind of stuff like that. And it might be the NHL saying, putting it out there, like we would for this season or something like that, and the OHL decided to go for it as possible. Or just the possibility that it's going to bring more offense and make a high scoring, higher scoring game and bring more people. And if it does, I'm scared to find out. I'm actually worried that they might fly with this because to me, if you take hitting out of the game, uh, like, I would watch women's hockey if they had hitting. And I'll tell you, Cassie Campbell, all of these <laughs> great women players all say there should be hitting in hockey. All oh, they do? Yes, they do. They don't. Once they got out of the bubble of being playing for a women's hockey league, yeah. they completely said there should be hitting in women's hockey. No yeah. doubt about it. It's wow. part of the game. It's silly we don't do it. Wow. And I agree. And I would watch it if it doesn't. If if I find if it's taken out, I just don't appreciate the game as much. And I'll flat out say it. I, I just don't. I don't see why people would. I guess we're going to find out. Is it going to become something like, um, I don't know, basketball, where basically you're just go down to one end and you score, and then you go down to the other end and score, and... It, it kind of yeah, like they they took a, a lot of the uh, you know the, the the clutching and grabbing out of out of the NHL over the years, and they kind of did a lot of that. Like back in the day when Jordan was playing, you could you could stand tall there in the paint and and take guys down. Well, you can't do that now. No. You know, you get fouled for that. Yeah. So you, you pretty much have to let guys. You, you know, you have to be like hands off. You know, like you you see the guys in the, in the NFL. You know, always putting their hands up like i didn't touch him i didn't touch him you, you know what i mean kind of thing it's like uh, look i'm i enjoy watching women's hockey because i i find it to be a much more intense and a faster paced game when you have to play the puck instead of the man okay and if they had hitting in women's hockey all right, uh, okay, I'd watch that too. Uh, what? I love watching women's hockey because, to me, I think it's very much exciting. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as that's concerned, to <clears throat> have that going on. But, I mean, you know, <clears throat> what, what do you think, Joe? I mean, really? No hitting, really? I mean, like I said, I think it's just going to be a year thing, but... I think it's going to be. I don't think they're going to ever keep not hitting in all. I do think they might update the rules to be more towards this current, like, protect against concussions and not kind of be in the old NHL style rules of hitting still. Uh, that that might be what it's to maybe yeah. it's have to do behind they? the scenes to work on that too. And then you kind of just uh, have it as a safety thing this year, see how it goes, and then put it back yeah. in when rules. It might be a good way to gauge where they can find a, an in between on yeah. hitting in the league and stuff like that. Uh, I suppose. Uh, yeah, this. I just don't want to see this going. I'm a on. very progressive hockey mutt person, but I can't get my head around. The hitting yeah, part. Me it's the one where I'm just like, whoa, yeah. wait, whoa, yeah, don't I think it's my perfect. hitting now, whoa. <laughs> I the only problem is, is that you're going to have all of these players that have been brought up in this system where hitting is, you know, what you're supposed to do and how are you yeah. going to take that away. Yeah. You can't really regulate when you've been doing this for 20 years or so, you know, you well, start when they're five years old. Yeah. And by the time you get to this point, you know, where you're playing in this league, you know, you've already had a, a game. You've already established your game to the point where, you know, that's why you, that's where you got drafted and or whatever the case is. So yeah, now, now that's going to be, that, what a great point. You know, now suddenly you have to, uh, not hit that guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's going to be guys in the league that are completely left stranded. Well, the other, 
Yeah. Oh the other reason why I don't think it'll stay past this year is these league, they know they're a developing pot for some of the best players to go to the NHL. They're gonna they're gonna keep hitting after it's not a safety issue because otherwise they're probably gonna get a call from some higher ups of the NHL going, hey, uh, we're not sending any good prospects to y'all because uh, you don't really play a game similar to the uh, NHL style anymore, so what the heck are they going to help us go in there for? Exactly. So you guys can get the tier and third tier prospects, and we're sending the first tier to the QMJHL, the Western Hockey League, and every other or, you know, wherever. Yeah, so um, th- it's not going to work out for them in the end if they ban hitting as a whole, so that's never going to happen. I don't think that's even... A possible, but but to end on some good news in the hockey world, I do think we should bring up too, because he's a home, t- <clears throat> not a hometown guy, but a guy that's been there since getting drafted. The Red Wings were able to retain Anthony Mantha for four years, who's a part of their core. Yep. They are trying to yeah. rebuild their team there. Twenty two point eight millions, uh, not a bad contract for him. He also has never had other than Dylan Larkin and two other people. Uh, a full team put around him, so uh, they're finally starting to kind of bring in those one-year lease guys that you then probably trade to get assets, but those do really help very good players yeah. like Mantha's numbers because they actually have guys that can put the puck in the net and not pass it across and then have the guy miss the net like you saw many times last yeah. year. So I think uh, you might see one of his better seasons this year, and I think he's just a player that's going to continue to trend upward, especially as the Red Wings get better with Stevie Y down uh, over there. No, that's a that's a great point, too, you know, and, and I think that's exactly what he's doing up there in Detroit, is trying to build, rebuild that team now, you know what I mean, because the very thing that's happened with them over the last couple of years, they've completely fallen off, they haven't made the playoffs, you know what I mean, and that's just not Detroit, you know what I mean, and, and that's why Steve Eisen was brought in there to, to take care of all those things and make sure that happens in Detroit again, you know what I mean, so... I mean, it's Detroit. Um, right. I mean, you know, it's back to the Z- a quick Z- note on that. We do, we talked about this in the Colorado pod that we did. Yeah. Together about Joe Sackick being such, and we mentioned Sackick and Eisenman, right? Everybody go check that out. It's on my shelf. It was fantastic. Uh, these guys are amazing. But uh, we did um, that, and we talked about Stevie Eisenman having that kind of brain. And to me, that, like, what was it, 5.7? Is that what it was, 5.7 for four or five years? This right. guy's possibly a 40-goal scorer as soon as this year. And he's only making $5.6 million or whatever? A year, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a team-friendly deal right there, buddy. Woo! <laughs> Are you kidding me? He almost got a point a game last year on the worst team in the league. Like, what? Is, like I said, what? If, what? If, we talked about it. Go check it out. We talk about what yeah. Stevie Eisman yeah. and Sackick and the reason why they're able to do this. So go check it out. But uh, that was an amazing deal. Absolutely amazing deal. Yeah, good. Good point there, Joe, for sure. Bringing that up because um, that's look for Detroit to be on the come in the next year or two for sure with 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 uh, the uh, Eisenman back there uh, rebuilding that team and, and going, you know, and, and that's from his heart too, you know what I mean? He played there for a long time, and so going exactly. back there was something that was really uh, important to him too as well. So, all right, speaking of uh, important to things and all kinds of other great, wonderful stuff, we're going to get into a little bit of bad news here, unfortunately. I would, uh, I would say, though, before we get to bad news, just for one more bit of good news uh, for Detroit, they also have in next year's draft their first three seconds and two thirds. Yeah. So they got a lot of one either trade bait to play with, yeah. or two a lot of good top round talent. Exactly. In, in yeah. next year's draft. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of right. Room to- manipulate and move things around and exactly and especially with next year's draft going to be very 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 different and interesting especially with the ohl not having the hitting and stuff like that and some of the other players are going to be coming up into the draft the tape that's going to be on those kids is going to be much different than it was from this previous year because there's not going to be any hitting and it's just going to be like with what joe said where you're going to see players that were maybe that are uh you know those second tier guys look like top tier guys because there is no hitting and or whatever the case is. So that's going to skew the draft a little bit. I, I think. wonder how that's going to work. Yeah. I, that's, that's what I, that's what I think is going to happen with that. But so that, that is some good news, especially for Detroit getting, getting that taken care of. But the bad news we get into is, is the fact that 
Penn State dropped its second game to Ohio State. And yeah, well, after they lost to Indiana, we kind of yeah, had yeah. a hint. That yeah, we had a hint. Um, I, I, uh, we, we played, eh. Sean Clifford looked, eh. But, look, you can tell we're missing uh, Journey Brown. You can tell we're missing um, uh, Micah Parsons in the defense. Um, you can tell it's, this is just not the same team with the amount of players that they lost in the draft last year uh, and things of that nature. So it's not going to be the same team this year. I can't believe they were ranked as high as they were, um, and then now they're out of the top 25. Now, well, yeah. So, with I Ohio mean, State coming in to Happy Valley and taking care of business. So We, we did get, you know, um, we did, didn't get blown out. No, it wasn't a blowout game. I mean, it was relatively... It wasn't close, but it wasn't a blowout. Competitive, sort of, kind of. But we don't look. There was no fans in the stands there at Happy Valley, and that that was a real shame because this was definitely going to be one of those whiteout games where um, it would have been the largest city in Pennsylvania during that game <laughs> uh, because the the stands hold over one hundred and nine thousand people. Yeah. So, but unfortunately, that's not what we got, and Penn State is now pretty much out of any kind of contention of anything, um, even if we win out, um, because they are only playing nine games, we've lost the first two games, and they're all conference games. So I think we missed that first couple of warm-up games. You know what I mean? Like that first couple, of, like that first August game, that first September game. Where well, we played. yeah, we didn't play. We didn't have the blue-white game, right? So we didn't have any of our scrimmage games or anything like that either. So I mean, you know, anyway. It is what it is. Um, good. Still Penn State. Love Penn State. Still love Penn State, but good on Ohio State for uh, coming in there. Now they're 2-0, and uh, they're, they're probably going to be in the top five, I imagine, uh, up there with uh, Clemson and, and Alabama and, and, and the rest of, uh, of the college football world is, is taking that on there like that. So uh, it's unfortunate that Penn State's not going to be able to um, – have the year that we were kind of hoping for this year, but you know that's just kind of the way it is. At least we're watching college football. I mean, I, I know you guys are kind of new to some of this stuff, but you got what do you guys think, uh, uh, Perlo? I know you're not really into college football, but uh, you've just been starting to watch regular NFL football. You know what I mean? So on a regular basis, yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as I mean, that happens. I can only relate it to hockey. Rankings for junior happens. That happens all the time. Guys get drafted, and they keep the ranking maybe lowered a little bit, probably just on reputation from the year before. The fact I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it's, they don't really want to slight the replacements until they see the, what the replacements do, especially when you're talking about young players. Mm-hmm. I find that a lot of these rankings have uh, are are built by more than just the junior teams. Like you said, they are a feeder team. So they don't want to be trampling on the confidence of these younger guys coming in. And seeding has something to do with that. I don't know if it's the same as in college football, if the NFL has its hand on some of the things that happen with college football. I imagine it does. But at least in conversation, anyway, it's not saying you have to do this. Well, most, most of all college football stuff is run by the NCAA and or the college itself. That's like the governing body for college football. Right. Um, NFL doesn't really have any say or, or anything like that as far as what we know. Well, yeah. they have, I see it, not they don't have a direct hand, but how they're playing in the NFL is going to influence how college is playing because yeah. they're going to eventually move into the NFL. Obviously, yeah. yeah. But here's the thing, and this is why I think that whole, um, that whole likeness and paying the players for their likeness has come into play because a lot of the college football players are their likenesses are being used um, to advertise for games and stuff like that. But yet those players do not benefit from, from any of that promotional stuff that's done that, that, you know what I mean? And so that's what the laws are trying to do and everything like that. And that's, that's a, that's a discussion for another day that I would really really like to get into with you guys sure. I, would uh, love to, I have a feeling i'm positive that the nfl of course 
they're not the directors. They don't direct them what to do. Right. But I'm sure they have plenty of conversations because these are oh, assets okay. that are going to become their assets. Yeah, and I know football. for sure the NHL with junior hockey definitely has conversations, and they don't want the future of their possible prospects having their confidence slammed by having a ranking and then tearing down that ranking because two t players left and two new players are going to come in. And it really does slam the uh, confidence. For these guys, they're like 15, 16 years old, though. It's a little different than in college, right? Yeah. Joe, what do you think about that? Well, I was going to say, the thing with um, college um, <clears throat> football is when you do your rankings, I think it is your part of you're not trying to slant from last year, but... I think also when you were talking about the NFL having some way, that would actually go by conference because the overall NCAA doesn't really rule college football. Right. College right. football is ruled by each of their individual conference. commission, conference yeah. commission. Yeah. So, like, the NFL might have a better reputation with, say, for example, the SEC commissioner. So he yeah. might listen to Goodell more than the Big Ten commissioner listens to Goodell. Like, it could all be different. That's why yeah, it's interesting point. with the way that uh, college is. And then also for the rankings, I think they ranked Penn State based off of the, all the guys that Steele said they're missing. And now that they don't have them, that's going to heavily – I mean, when you don't have one of the best defensive players in the draft and you don't have um, two of the better running backs in yeah. Kane and uh, Brown, uh, that's not going to make you go a long way. When no. Clifford is a guy that relies more on having a split offense, exactly. you can't have to throw a ball a million. He needs times. that run pass yeah. option because he's not going to be able to beat you with just his arm. You know what I mean? He needs to have that RPO and not having Journey Brown back there to be able to take some of that pressure off of him. You know what I mean? And then the fact that their defense spends way more time on the field now because they're not able to stop teams because of missing Par Parsons. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that definitely plays into it. And I also think the rankings have a lot to do with, especially now with how the playoffs and and how the rankings go with the playoffs. And then that basically boils down to where teams end up going in for the playoffs for, for, the, uh, for the, the championships. And that's why the rankings mean a lot more in college football than they do in anything else. Yeah. So. Um, you know what that I mean? That was the other thing. Yeah, I was going to mention the rankings do mean a lot more there. So yeah, especially in college football. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, Penn State wasn't able to take care of us, but you know it is what it is. So um, I'm going to say on that note, we'll be right back after these messages. Hello, this is Steel Flyers from the Steel Flyers podcast, and one of the main reasons I even have a podcast is because of the folks at Anchor FM. The easy-to-use website helped even a beginner like me get my podcast up and running in no time flat. Best of all, it was free. Record your podcast directly into Anchor or drag and drop one you've already made with your device. It's as easy as that. Best of all, Anchor does all the work by posting your podcast into the podcast universe from Spotify to Radio Public. Here's the best part. Anchor will help get you sponsorship and get paid when listeners hear your podcast. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. So what are you waiting for? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> now that we talked about all the bad news and some good news for Edmonton and some of the other hockey teams, Detroit, let's get into some really awesome news. Well, for us. For us. And, well, for, gosh, quite a few million people, I would have to say. Uh, may not be the people. Yeah. Uh, Steeler Nation, Pittsburgh Steelers are 7 and O. Oh. I, I, that is just amazing to me. Uh, I was delighted to be joined by the great Perlo uh, to call the game uh, for, for the first half of that game. Uh, and it didn't look like it was going to be uh, Pittsburgh coming out of there. Uh, <laughs> it didn't. Because as a Steeler fan, you can't watch the game without having a heart attack. Well, okay, right. You know. <laughs> and, uh, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, we haven't been seven and zero since nineteen seventy eight. The last time we were seven and zero, we went to the Super Bowl, um, and uh, I don't know, man. It, it we got the Dallas Cowboys are coming up next. 
um, the Baltimore Ravens was definitely a typical Baltimore Ravens Pittsburgh Steelers game. It was, when I like games like that, when it's not um, when you have a heart attack. Well, no, when it's not so one sided that you're like, hey, I don't really want to watch because I know what's going to happen. But when it's no, exciting, I like those games. <laughs> <laughs> when you know it, it, it's intense, and that's what football no, should be. No, I don't want to have to have a heart attack. I don't want to have to have a defibrillator on standby when I'm watching the freaking game. Okay, I want to be kicking back by like the beginning of the third period. It's thirty-six to nothing, right? You know, come on. <laughs> I do think though, uh, it kind of boiled down to what I said. The half is the divider in the game of football, uh, especially uh, where uh, you see it in basketball, but you tend to see it more in football, uh, where uh, you don't have a team that has a lot of momentum. They seem to be sputting and leaking gas, and then all of a sudden they have, they have that talk in the locker room. The leadership players step up. The coach probably has a couple words to say. Some coaches don't say anything because they would rather have the players get at each other and motivate each other. It depends on the coach. Uh, but uh, that usually is what can get you going, and you saw a better start to the second half, and that's kind of what just extended it through and through to have a good defensive game which is what first and foremost obviously won the Steelers that game to give their great opportunities, and then they capitalized on these opportunities no, exactly. when needed. So, yeah. No, exactly. Um, and, and, you know, that's a, a great point because uh, we've talked about this in all of our multiple shows that we've done about how, um, you know, hockey teams do adjustments on the fly much more quickly and are much more needed um, on the fly than, like, say, a football team, where a football team has a really – Okay, it wasn't the worst half of football that the Steelers played, but it wasn't our best. Okay, and the fact that we were able to go into the locker room and make those adjustments and do the kinds of things and get those speeches that needed to be speeched and and, and get those players that needed to come up and, and say the things we needed to say and watch a little bit of film and see a little bit of and make those adjustments that you need to do to come out in the second half and take care of business. You know what I mean? And, and Pearl, you touched on this a lot of times too, especially in some of our other videos. And, and shows that we've done about how when, when you know in hockey it's it's the transition is much quicker because you have to make your adjustments much quicker mm-hmm. you know what i mean and that was something that we touched on that's why i wanted to ask you this so what do you think about what the steelers did at the halftime what do you think happened in the locker room what yeah do what do you yeah what do you think happened in the locker room there to, to to for the steelers to come out there in the second half and pretty much um take the victory well I think the locker room can be several things. I mean, sure, great coaches seem to be able to even take um, teams that are not the best at uh, changing their direction and do well. That's possible. Um, A lot of times the coach will say the same thing to all different teams. And the ones that are – because we talked about it, the difference between good and great teams, right? Yeah. Good Good teams win when they're winning. Good things win when things are going well. Uh, but great uh, but teams. Good, good teams have a tendency to let, th- once things start sliding, they continue sliding. And they're the ones that end up like 10 and 7 or something like that, or 10, you know, at the end of the year. Uh, but great teams do what the Steelers did. Great teams change their way of looking at the way the situation. Great teams are able to build themselves up and remind themselves how great they are. And make great adjustments. teams don't start uh, stop stop negative thinking that causes these avalanches and nerves and all of these things and, and quick uh, passes that shouldn't be passed and uh, drop balls because of uh, you know it, once you're once a team's feeling down on themselves as a, as a group, it's next to it's next to impossible to come back in that space. Exactly. Something has to happen for them to remind themselves they are an amazing team. And the Steelers in that game, and and Joe was the one that he called it. Joe called it. Joe called it. Said the second half, I'll watch yep. the Steelers. Are oh, yeah. Come back here. And, oh yeah. And he did. And that's exactly. You know what happened? Of course, they also great teams seem to get those missed field goals at the end. And, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well. and I'm not saying that I'm not saying yeah. that uh, the Ravens are not a great team. It was a great matchup. But they have the best field goal kicker in the league on their team. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, because Tucker is just the. I mean, he just doesn't. He booted a fifty-one yarder uh, during that game like it was just nothing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, but, but that comeback with the Steelers then put the "Are you a great team?" into the Ravens court and said, "You challenge them. Are, are you a great team? Because we're coming back and showing you we are a great team." And now it's your turn. And the missed field goal now leaves question marks in their minds going into the next game. Are we a great team? And this is what a coach is going to say is, missed field goal, whatever, let's not forget how great of a team we are. And the Steelers came back and said, yo, we are. We are a great team. This is what great teams do, and this is what we're going to do. And I imagine that's what the coach said. And it seems like the Mm. players responded. in. in, in Yeah, Yeah, I mean, you know, um, Joe, you called it for sure, too, because that's – Look, unfortunately, we've seen too many times our, our our Pennsylvania teams have not made adjustments, okay? And, and quite frankly, I think, you know, Pittsburgh made those adjustments um, at halftime and was able to come out and, and, and deny the, the Ravens the ability to to take things where they wanted to go. You know what I mean? Last year was a different story. Pittsburgh was... Um, a much different team last year, although we played them relatively well. And we played, I think we play Lamar one of, I think Pittsburgh is one of the best teams that plays against Lamar because he never seems to have his best game against Pittsburgh. That's because we, I'm sorry, Joe, um, we play the same type of football. Well, sort of. So, you know, they know... Kind of. Yeah, I mean, we don't have Ben's not out there running around. No, that's true. <laughs> we're, it's changed a little bit now because of quarterback, yeah, yeah. but I still think we are very similar teams. Yeah, because they are a run-first team, and they were without Ingram, but it didn't matter because cause your boy, uh, Joe, came in and, and just 116 yards on the ground. I mean, man, jeez. Yeah, yeah Ingram make that adjustment. <laughs> yeah, Ingram's the downhill pounder guy. They have Dobbins and uh, Edwards or the mix it um, scat bat guys that can kind of do a mix yeah. combo of what you want them to do. Yeah, but he was, re- I mean, 116 yards for him for the game, and that is very uncharacteristic of Pittsburgh to give up that much time to- or that much yardage and that much time of possession, especially to opposition. You know, and that bodes that says a lot about what Baltimore's doing. Because they are doing exactly the same kinds of thing as what Pittsburgh's doing, only slightly differently. They're a possession team, they're a run first team, you know what I mean? And they're gonna try to just wear you down. Where that's exactly what Pittsburgh does. Yeah. And then they, they slide that, you know, uh Lamar um awesome Jackson play out there to, to get their points, you know, and he was able to sling the ball, but it just seems like he doesn't have his best game against Pittsburgh, and Pittsburgh's going up against the Cowboys next week. And, and So I actually have a question. Okay. Looking at the Steelers' schedule mm-hmm. and the upcoming games that we have, Yeah. this is for everybody, whoever wants to answer. Well, how about if we all answer it? Okay. Okay. What do you think the Steelers' record will be at the end of the year, at the end of regular season? Okay. Considering we're playing Dallas, which we have a good chance of winning. Right. We're playing the Browns again, which we have a good chance of winning. Right, we play the Bengals. We play the Bengals twice. Right, and then we play the... The the, the, the Bills, the Colts, and the Jags. And then we also play the Ravens one more time. And the Ravens. Okay. Now, I think the I think the Ravens game, they've got something to prove, so I don't know if that one's... And that will be in Heinz Field, though. Okay, well, it doesn't matter because it's not really... Well, they have more fans in the stands now. Anyway, Okay. so here's my question. What do you think their record will end up being? So who do you want first? Uh, let's let you go first. You Maybe. want me first? Yeah. Okay. Oh, gosh. Because you're probably going to... Take the longest? <laughs> yeah. Don't be the, be, be the, the long-windiest of this? Okay, just because they're my team and you know I am such a homer and, and I'm all about the Steelers and we all know that. And, and let's face it, um, the Steelers starting at, at 7-0 and is... Not necessarily something that I was expecting, but not necessarily something that is surprising me. Um, when we did our original um, prediction show, we predicted that Pittsburgh would be 4-0 after the first four games. That included the original schedule, which would have put Pittsburgh playing Tennessee in week four. Okay, Unfortunately, that's not how that happened, and things happened the way they did, and here, here's how we go. 
Um, honestly, I I can see Pittsburgh maybe losing. What do we have left? Ten games? No. Nine? One, six, eight, nine, yeah. Nine games. I can see us maybe losing three of those nine games. Okay. Okay. So, there you go. Okay. What do you think, Joe? Um, the teams that one that I would peg that you could lose to would obviously be the Ravens. I don't think you're going to lose to the Cowboys, the Bengals, or the following week that's in Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh, you won't lose to the Bengals. Even in Jacksonville, you shouldn't lose to the Jaguars. So then the Ravens is a question mark. Washington should not be a question mark in Pittsburgh. And then the Bills, I would say, in Buffalo is a question mark game on the 13th of December. So yep. those are the two games I would point to. Uh, other than that, though, you have Bengals, Colts, and Browns. Uh, the Colts are playing well this year, but the Steelers have a more complete team than the Colts. So I think the Steelers would still benefit at home against the Colts better than the Colts would beat the Steelers. I mm-hmm. think the only team that would honestly have a chance to beat them, and this might literally just be by default because the Browns might be playing for something and the Steelers might not be playing for zilch by the final week of the season. Right, right, like right, Cleveland right. in the final week of the season. That might be the Which only is, thing would, that would give them the three losses. Yeah, I'm, that's, that's I'm why pegging. I see. Yeah, yeah I'm You're pegging following two. my thinking there, Joe. Because yeah. I'm pegging two with the Bills and uh, yeah. Ravens, where yeah. the only way I think they're losing to Cleveland is if they're not starting people because they already clinched a spot and they don't need to start people. Yeah. And Cleveland's still going to be playing for something, most likely, with the way that they're yeah. seasoned. Yeah. So. And that's exactly why I gave it that, because of, for those specific reasons right there. Yeah. So, um, Perlo, what do you think? Um, I was going to say, until Joe said it, I was going to say they're going to go 16-1, and one, or 15-1. and one. Uh, But, um, wow. like I said, I'm comparing a lot of this to what I view as teams in sports in general, and uh, like you said, you're right. I haven't been, uh, and and when that win against that win last week was what we just talked about was extremely impressive. Um, the 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 Browns when they're playing for something, and yeah, I, I agree with that. I just get the feeling that, and we've talked about this before. Uh, we'll see how much they play down to Dallas. Then I'll say if they play down to Dallas, which I doubt they will, from what from the mental uh, thing that I've seen so far, then I'll lose the Browns, maybe the Bills, and maybe the Ravens again, uh, clo- getting closer to the end of the year. If they pounce and and trample Dallas and don't do that, and they also have some, I like to call it mind freedom. They, if the coach is giving them a, a, a good mind freedom during the during all through the regular season, where it's not a complete intense of keeping that balance, I think they could go 15 and one. This team is like strong as heck, and and Roth to me looks. I don't I don't know, man. He looks as good as of an athlete as I've seen in the game this year. He looks driven and and and, and wanting to win. Uh, every point it seems every yeah. pass, I yeah. he, you don't see that too often in sports where you have an athlete that just seems to still want to get better as an individual every time he gets the ball at yeah. his age. That's what I see in this guy. So, and he's bringing that energy to this team, man. So. I see a special team here, and I could definitely see that being a possibility. I'm going to say I'm going to go say they they lose two though. I'm going to say okay. they lose two. Okay. Uh, that, and and those two, uh, um, I have a feeling that the Bills are going to get better and better as the year goes on. It's going to be a tough game, and they could be in a position where there's a little bit of a letdown there. And I don't think they're going to lose to the Browns, uh, but I think that they could lose their next one to the Ravens. Yeah. Okay. I think the Ravens are going to be um, more motivated because they did lose, and they're always they got to win one of the. You know. Here's my other. Here's another point that I don't think anybody is. Um, the Steelers are playing 13 games in a row. 
without a, a break because their buy was used for the mm -hmm. seat. week four. Yeah. Do you think by the end of the year they're going to get so run down yeah. that they're not going to have any gas left to carry them into the playoffs? Well, here's the thing. Um, Tomlin gives uh, a lot of the um, veterans days off during the week for practice. So, like, Wednesdays is usually most of the vets are sitting out. Okay. Okay? On, on Wednesdays. So, for the most part. And then teams, especially, like, if you win on Sunday, most teams don't even come back into the facility unless you have rehab or medical to come in. You don't even come into the facility until Tuesday. Okay. You know what I'm I mean? I'm just wondering how well, that's right. going to affect right. it. Right. So, it, it's going to. I, I guarantee you it's going to as, as long as we can keep on, you know, keeping most of the injuries down to the minimums. You know, like the Cam Hayward Cam Hayward went down with a quad injury, but they're not saying it's not necessarily as bad as it could have been. You know what I mean? So he might potentially be back. You know what I mean? And so those are the kinds of things too. So I like everything that you guys said, man. I really I really think this team could be special no matter what happens. Um I would I would love to see the team go and 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 as far as we can, but quite honestly, uh, the only the only team that I would consider even something that would be that we would have to be really looking out for would be Kansas City. I mean, as far as the AFC is concerned, um, Kansas City would be the only team that I would be kind of like, okay, this is a this is a five star matchup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kansas City and Pittsburgh, because I think that's how it's I think that's how it's going to end up at the end of the year. But you know, hey. Stranger things have happened, so we'll just keep on keeping on. And well, look at the Patriots; they had a perfect season up until somebody caught a football with their helmet. So and then that ended that perfect season. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the Eagles did win one, so go Eagles! Right, we got to give a little love to the Eagles. They're still in first place, and right? they are still in first place as well, too. So so go Eagles, beating the the Cowboys. So. They, they, I saw the uh, the great little, uh, the, I think it was on Twitter or Facebook, I can't remember where I saw it, but uh, Dallas flew all the way to Philadelphia to kick three field goals. <laughs> so now they're going to fly back to Dallas. Okay. <laughs> so kudos to the, to the Eagles for taking that one, Joe. Yeah, now it's their bye week. Um, they still have a lot of work to do, though. Uh, like people said on the post game, that was the probably the least impressive win you could ever have in the existence <laughs> of football. Um, so uh, you still have a lot to work on. You won because a third stringer was in, and you won because ma mainly, honestly, because a third stringer was in. That was a seventh round pick that's in over his head right now, and you got him to turn over the ball a couple times. Uh, by actually pressuring him and Jim Schwartz playing a smart defense due to the circumstances. So right. that's the reason you won the game. Your offense still looked very sloppy. And uh, yeah. the so it's, it's not put together yet. I think the Eagles are really waiting for Sanders to come back and be efficient like he was last year to be able to get their offense going. Cause yeah, because you guys are missing some people, too. And, yeah. and your wide receivers, you're missing. Um, Alshon Jeffries hasn't played consistently well, this year, right? Well, Jeffrey, yeah, but I think Jeffrey's just a lost cause at this point. And okay. then um, other I, – I think it's more Sanders when he comes back. Doug also has to mix in the run more because even when he was healthy, for some reason Peterson just won't run enough this year. Yeah. So he just needs to mix in the run more to throw off the defense more where – Wentz is having one of his worst seasons, and for some reason, your idea of success is let's pass more. So that's not really the that's not really the recipe there. So no. you need to adjust no. some things during this bye week. <laughs> so. No, no, definitely not. Well, Wentz is getting knocked around a lot. That too. The, the, oh, the he, offensive he, line, he is offensive but line that's the same reason. Job yeah. You should have yeah. as much as you and you shouldn't do these four-step drop-back passes. If your offensive line is getting knocked around, what makes you think in your head, oh, let's do this three-step drop-back pass where my quarterback has to stand there, no. read his three routes, and make a determination? It's like, no, start, if, if, if your offensive line is that terrible, 
start running an offense like the Patriots to at least be somewhat efficient. Just start telling everybody, slant it, cut out, we're going to get at least something you know I mean? he's blocking right now, and I need to get rid of this in a less than two seconds. Like, you have to start, if your line's playing like that, you have to play another team, as much as I hate to say it, that played pretty well like that when they had Beto lines was Dallas, because Romo would get rid of the ball. He was yeah. one of the guys that got rid of the ball the quickest always in the real NFL quick, yeah. each year. Mm-hmm. Wentz holds on to the ball sometimes too long, and that combined with a poor O-line play doesn't mix. Right. right. So that's why you need to make adjustments in the bye week to have better plays designed to get the ball out quicker yeah, and that. use your players better yeah. because they're only utilizing two guys very well in Greg Ward and Travis Fulton. They're fortunate that Wentz is a moose because otherwise he would have been done already this year. I know, I know, and and that's been very fortunate for them for sure. You know what I mean. So, uh, one other thing I want to get into here real quick, uh, we did have um, a another record fell this past weekend. Um, we had uh, Lewis Hamilton uh, take the victory at the uh, Amelia Romagna. What a surprise! Yeah, uh, at the Amelia Romagna um, Grand Prix. And he now has surpassed Michael Schumacher uh, for number of wins, uh, for 93 total wins. Um, he's also um, 114 laps led away from the record of uh, 5,114 laps led by Michael Schumacher. Um, I have a feeling that that will be taken care of in the next two races uh, for sure. Um, so uh, Looks like it's going to be a Mercedes uh, championship again this year, and it looks like it's going to be a Lewis Hamilton championship th- again this year. So we just wanted to shout out to that real quick, just to uh, uh, say, say that, uh, unfortunately, it's not going to be a good year for Ferrari. Uh, we're floundering around in sixth place, um, so hopefully next year will be a bit of a different story. When do they start changing? When do the rules change again? That because of the COVID, they've changed. The, they were going to start this coming season in 2021 but because of covid they pushed it back to 2022 so everything is going to remain the same as things are this year is going to remain for next year right but that gives them another year to prepare for the changes yes that's a good thing yes i would think to give them a little more time to make those adjustments yeah well whatever yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Would you like a trivia question? Yes. Can we? Subject? Yes. Can we get into our trivia now? <laughs> um, this is an honor, Joe, the Eagles fan. Okay. So I pulled up Eagles trivia. Ooh, there you go. All right. But this is probably an easy one. Um. So anybody can answer. What reason did former Eagles head coach Buddy Ryan give for cutting future Hall of Famer wide receiver Chris Carter? What was the reason that he cut him, that he told the press? Oh, that he told the press. Well, that's a, it's a very famous quote that he gave. Oh, I, 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 Joe? That's before my time. Well, his reason was, all he did, this was the quote, all he can do is score touchdowns. Oh, that's right. I should know. I remember that. That's right. Now, every time I saw Chris Carter play, for the Minnesota Vikings, because I, 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 he only played for Philadelphia for two or three years. He was originally drafted by them, and then he only played for them for a couple years. Yes. Yeah. And then he was traded to um, Minnesota. Now, Chris Carter had a um, publicly known um, substance uh, abuse issue with cocaine, okay, and was facing some potential... Uh, bad juju there because of that particular um, issue and so um, we feel I feel and and he feels that that was the reason why he was let go in 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 Philadelphia but he came to Minnesota and was brought in and it's kind of funny that Chris Berman took that quote and and monikered that to Chris Carter to all he does is catch touchdowns right because Chris Carter is now in the Hall of Fame exactly. for doing exactly that, catching well, that's when touchdowns. that's you know it's another reason, too, because that's like releasing a pitcher in baseball and saying, well, all he does is strike people out. So, <laughs> I had a it's like, so like that, that, that's how you know there's a different in-line reason behind. I mean, what? Yeah, so. I think... 
I remember that quote, and I can't. I couldn't remember it was Carter, but now that you're explaining it, the coach beforehand was basically saying the rest of his life is a shambles. Exactly. And this is not about the football player anymore. This is about the person. And I hope he finds someplace and takes this and realizes that it's either your career or your problem. And I don't care if he gets touchdowns for another team. I care more about the person. And this might have been the only way to shake this guy up to say, okay, this it comes to this now. So, and, uh, you know, so you would really say kudos to for doing that. You know, because it worked. Because yeah. he straightened himself out, right? He got clean, he got sober, and he's in the Hall of Fame because all he did was freaking catch touchdowns. <laughs> he also he also tutored. Uh, he was a tutor for Randy Moss. Yeah, and I found that interesting too. Well, when Randy Moss was originally drafted, um, uh, Chris Carter was still part of the Minnesota Vikings. Right. So I mean, he was you know. Yeah, he 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 helped him come along and, and things of that nature, and and now Randy Moss is. I mean, that's how one older player can influence a younger player. You know, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and we see that a lot in sports all over the place, especially in hockey. I think you see, I think you see it a lot more in hockey than I think you do in any in, in too many of the other sports because hockey is such a team game and such a team sport, and you have such a difference in players that you have guys that are grizzled vets that are you know thirty eight years old. And then you have the kid that was just drafted, and he's 18. Well, you know, the grizzled veteran's got wife and kids. His life is a whole different ball game than what that 18-year-old rookie coming in doing. You know what I mean? It, I, I like seeing that kind of stuff. I like seeing the older players mentoring the younger players and stuff like that, too. You know what I mean? So, uh, guys, it's been a, a blast. We love having you guys both on, man. These are these are some of the most awesome shows, man. Joe, Professor yeah. Joe, how can you how can we get a hold of you and tell all the folks where we can get you? Uh, you can check it out at steelflyers.com. We got the links there, and then Pub Sports Radio, OT Heroics, or the other things I write for, and of course the Sports Fanatic News YouTube channel. And JJ Boric twenty six is my Twitter. But I did want to say. For all the people down there in Miami, by Great Miami Beach, beautiful place. If you never went there, get yourself down there after COVID. I recommend. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but they're four and three. The Miami Dolphins. Shout out to Miami. I'll give that as a going away good news to this episode. There you go. I mean, hey, they made the right choice on a quarterback, right? Go, go Tua, right? Tua, yeah. Yeah, Tua. Perlo, my man. Always a pleasure having you here. The best in the biz, sir. How can we find you? How can we follow you? Uh, you can find me at uh, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom on YouTube that you can find in a link in steelflyers.com, www.steelflyers.com. It's the best that I've said it. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. That that uh, website is, is already fantastic. It's just going to keep on getting more and more amazing. Um, I, I'm doing a series right now with these two gentlemen and other great uh, YouTubers and podcasters and writers on in the NHL about each individual team, how they've did in the free agency and where they're going for the future in the off season. It's growing and it's fantastic. Hey man, check that uh, out. Highly recommend you check it out there. Um, and uh, yeah, like I said, go to www.steelflyers. You can find my Twitter and all of that kind of stuff there. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be. For sure. I'd like to thank uh, our delightful and lovely co-host, Ronis. Thank you for having me on. You got it. Um, this is uh, Steel Flyers, and uh, just like everybody said, you can catch us on steelflyers.com. Um, it's a one-stop shop. Got all the great videos, all the great content, and all the great stuff there for you to, to, to check out. Also, be looking for some great new uh, web pages, especially for uh, True Philadelphia Sports and also for NHL Pearl of Wisdom. Look, be looking for the links to those pages coming out. Also, another page coming out for a new show, uh, Hockey Writers Inc. That page will be coming out here soon too, and and the second show of that will be coming out here um, the end of this week too. So I'll be checking that out for sure. Thank you guys for joining us. Remember, the, always stay safe, stay strong. And hang tough.